I'm really excited, guys. You guys have been watching my latest videos. Thank you so much. So many of you have subscribed lately. Thank you. And if you haven't yet, hit the button. Join our YouTube family. We have a lot to do today. Let's get right to it. I'm Loud Boy, and this is the Loud Boy Experience. Let's go. You know the song Lakeside Park by Rush. Well, there's always been a Lakeside Park. That's why Neil wrote the song. He worked there when he was young. It's in St. Catharines, which is up there in Canada. Or if you're in Canada, it's down the road. So Lakeside Park is real. But more importantly, there is now a full memorial and pavilion and an art display to memorialize Neil Peart. And just last month, there was a gathering of fans and town folk and the mayor, and they're raising money for this. They're trying to raise a million dollars. You can actually go to Rush or Rush Backstage, one of the two, and you can donate to this cause. It's a good cause, all right? Supporting the memory of Neil. I don't see a, a better cause. And what's great is, if I believe if donations are over 20 or like 50 bucks, let me see here. Yeah, $20 or more, you actually get a, a tax write-off, okay? So if you want that added bonus. But yeah, last month, a celebration to kick off this donation drive to help out Lakeside Park, to help out a memorial for Neil Peart. It's a great idea, and someday I would love to go. So I, I, I seriously, I would love, you know, actually, the next time I head to New England, I should just pop up there, because we go up by the Great Lakes, and as we're traversing the country, and we could actually have to convince the wife of that. So, Lake, Lakeside Park, Neil Peart, donate today. Support this. It seems like a worthy cause. You know, Getty has a memoir out. And right now there's actually a sweepstakes. If you go to Rush, or is it Rush Backstage, check out either one. And you can sign up for the sweepstakes, which is to get an autographed copy of his memoir. So you can check that out right now. And and I already have. It'd be great to get an autographed copy from, from Ged on his memoir. So check that out right now. Rush.com. Why we miss Neil Peart. And this guy wrote, man, I just want to say, I feel you, man. I just finished Getty's memoir and it felt like I felt the pain of losing Neil all over again. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure I can read that. I, I want to read it. I know about it. Haven't gotten it yet. But I have a feeling it would be a tough read. I'm glad you did. And I'm glad you wrote. Thank you, bro. It has been an honor. An honor. Meeting you guys through your comments and our discussions and back and forth. Thank you for watching my recent Rush videos. I have a lot of videos on my channel about Rush. This most recent one, you guys have overwhelmingly supported it. Thank you. Subscribe if you want to watch more Rush videos in the future. This connects us. Our love of three guys from Canada who formed a band called Rush. I know it seems so simple, right? In its genesis and in the conception and the idea. And yet, the legacy the 40 plus years of music, all the times that you and I have seen them live. What is that? That's a connection. That's a connection. And this connection, I feel, is strong. It has been an honor and a pleasure. It's been my pleasure hearing from you guys and reach out more. Drop me a comment. One of the original connections I made with Rush, I've mentioned Billy, the older drummer that showed me and introduced me to Rush. But it was college, and I met Joel. Not only did Joel love Rush and had all their albums, but he also loved and knew about and loved Dream Theater. Hello, ding, 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 we have a winner. Yeah, Joel. We both started off with the worst roommates one could imagine. 
respectively for us. This was in the early 90s. Joel's roommate was online all the time. Early 90s. Doing DOS-based internet stuff. And in fact, one break, must have been one of the fall breaks, his roommate had met a girl online. Again, there's no pictures. There are no internet browsers. Everything is DOS, text-based. You know Yahoo used to be text-based, by the way? It just said Yahoo, and it had a bunch of word links, you know, entertainment, news, business, whatever. The, yeah, That was my first introduction to Yahoo, by the way. So, Joel's roommate meets this girl and goes off. To, he actually hops on a train like a hobo and rides out to, like, Minnesota or something to meet this girl that he met online. I swear, I'm shocked he wasn't murdered out there. Who knows who could have been at the other end of that. Even today, with pictures and browsers, we still don't know what kind of creep could... All right, I digress. My roommate, though, you know what I'm into, right? Progressive rock. Pretty hard rock. That kind of stuff. I love jazz. I'm a sax player. I'm a drummer. My roommate was into pop music, but not just pop music. He was basically in a barbershop quartet. I had a stereo, uh, two satellite speakers, subwoofer. I had a six CD changer, a, a, a great receiver, double tape deck. I had my own stereo system that I bought with my hard-earned money in high school. Loved my stereo to death. It was my pride and joy at the time. And I'd come back after a long day of school. I come back after class and through my door I could hear Janet Jackson or Boys to Men or some other music that makes my skin crawl and the paint peel off the walls. The worst freaking music in the world. I, I don't like. And he'd be blaring it on my stereo. He'd be putting his music in my CD. My six uh, Denon, I believe. Yeah, was, was it Denon? Uh, six CD changer, right? It had six instead of the five. Like, Sony only had five. Mine had six. He'd be blaring that music. It took a lot of patience to walk into that room and go, Hey, how are things? I came home one day in my barbershop quartet loving Janet Jackson listening roommate had just moved out. I think he claimed we weren't compatible. <laughs> you have no idea. I think I was as ill-suited for him as he was for me. He Meaning he felt that. Thank goodness. What's so awesome is, without the school being involved, or any paperwork, or anyone being told, Joel grabbed his comforter and his pillow and plopped down on the bed across the room. And the rest is history. Why do I bring up Joel? Well, it was Rush and Dream Theater, but also our love of sci-fi, our love of Lord of the Rings, and all these things that united us, right? And so often that's what these things do. The things we listen to, the things we like to watch, and the things we like to play. Man, for hours we'd play columns, or for hours, we because I had my, my Genesis back then, right? I brought my Genesis to school, my Sega Genesis, and we'd just play for hours. While we were playing video games on my, on my Genesis, we would play a game of Russian Relay with my CD changer. We put in five really amazing CDs, and the sixth one, right? Like the bullet in the chamber of a revolver, that you spin. The sixth one is we, we each had some kind of crap CD, right? Of some horrible music. So yeah, and we just hit random. So the CD changer could go for two hours, one disc after another, choosing one song, right? So it would move a disc around, randomly choose one song, and then move a disc to a disc three over here and choose a song, and then back to disc one. But finally, it would get to that sixth disc, and we'd be like, no, yeah, because we'd been shot at that point, right? We lost the game. We found the, the chamber with a bullet in it. The awful song, the awful CD. That was a fun game. Joel, that was, that was awesome, dude. College was a blast, and it got even better when we formed a band. And that band was Goatmeal. Yeah. 
as in oatmeal with a G, goat meal. We then found a bass player. Joel played guitar. Beautiful, beautiful guitar. We found a bass player with an old Rickenbacker white bass, just like Getty used to play. And it, what blew my mind was that I knew Will was the guy for us. I went to his room. We just start hanging out. We had these common things. We, we all loved Rush. And, and there were different things that united us, right? Rush being a, a primary one. Will gets out his Rickenbacker. He's got a, like a little practice amp, right? You know, as you would in a college dorm room. And he starts just wailing on the best bass part of natural science. All right? Just wailing on He's playing natural science. Little known to him, if I were to choose my favorite Rush song, I would choose a song that I would most want to see live. Like before R40... There was only one song I wanted to see live, and that was Natural Science. I love Natural Science off of Permanent Waves. Possibly my favorite Rush song. I know I've said I can't pick one. Natural Science probably is it, and I have my reasons. But musically, lyrically, structurally, conceptually, Natural Science, in my opinion, is one of their best works ever. That's just my personal opinion. It's what I like. I'm sure that one of you guys is going to write and say, you know what? I don't like natural science. For all the reasons you stated, hey, dude, and by the way, I'm joking. I'm not trying to mock your, your, your comment. I'm, <laughs> I'm not. I'm just saying that, you know, we all have different opinions, right? And my opinion is natural science is brilliant. And I love that song. And what's great is by permanent waves, as you well know, they were already moving away from the multi-phase, lengthy song. They were moving away from that into making modern music, weren't they? And, of course, this came to a perfect fruition on the masterpiece of moving pictures. But Permanent Waves led into that. Permanent Waves took the past and started kind of putting it through a filter or through a lens or through a gel. And, and the light that shone created these moving pictures from the past. And, that, and to me, that it's a great transitional album that way. A beautiful transitional album. I'm a lyrics guy. I love lyrics. And my favorite lyricist of all time, of course, is Neil Peart. I mean, who else, right? There are three parts to natural science. The tide pools, hyperspace, and part three is permanent waves. The first part, though, it, it draws these comparisons. You know, a tidal pool, right? As the waves crash in, it'll carry small sea life in. And then it leaves behind these pools of water in like the crevices of the rocks. And if you've ever been to Maine, go sometime if you haven't. And I love the line, right? The second line of the song is, when the ebbing, ebbing tide retreats along the rocky shoreline, I always think of Maine. Because again, I grew up in New England and I love, I love the coastline of Maine, the rocky shoreline. And it leaves behind these tidal pools, these little short-lived galaxies. And what, he, what Neil's talking about, these are microcosms of the bigger picture of the entire galaxy, but also of society, too. And he's drawing all these comparisons between multiple things. These are some of my favorite lyrics of the song. Science, like nature, must also be tamed with a view towards its preservation. Given the same state of integrity, it will surely serve us well. I mean, who writes like that? It'll surely serve us well. Art as expression, not as market campaigns. Art as expression, not as market campaigns. We'll still capture our imaginations. Given the same state of integrity, it'll surely help us along. The most endangered species, the honest man, will still survive annihilation, forming a world state of integrity Sensitive, open, and strong. The most endangered species, the honest man. Hmm. We do miss a lot of honesty these days, don't we? Too many lies. That's why so much of what I say to you is unfiltered. I do my darndest every day of my life not to lie. I think lying is a cancer, and I, I, I hate it. I abhor it. 
Do we all make mistakes? Yeah, of course. We live in a world of pretense. We live in a world where far too many people are pretending and far too many people are lying to you all the time. And yeah, the most endangered species is the honest man. And therefore, I encourage all of us together, because we got to stick together, guys, to strive to be honest in our lives. Even when it's painful, even when there's repercussions, try to be honest all the time. Don't be that species that dies out. Recently, I made a Rush video, a video about our favorite band, Rush. It's called A Rush of Inspiration, How the Progressive Trinity Influenced the Next Generation. I've gotten a ton of comments from you. I wanted to read a few of them because I wanted to share with you some of the thoughts of our fellow Rush fans. One person just wrote, incredible band. Thank you, bud. Another one, Alien Shore, one of their best. Baseline is outstanding. Lyrics great. Guitar amazing. One of my favorite Rush songs. Also, someone made the steak soup that I made recently. If you, uh, on my channel, there's a Plaza 3 steak soup, and they wrote, I made it, and it was delicious. Good. I'm glad that wasn't false advertising. Good. Yeah, you can check out my cooking videos. More are coming, guys. In fact, a friend of mine, Sean, had an idea tonight for me, me to make a copycat recipe of a new pasta we have at work. I might just do that. So details coming up. But yeah, more cooking videos are coming. I promise. I hope. <laughs> so, more Rush mail. Alex has so many components to his playing. He's an incredibly beautiful player. The emotion in his, in his solos and his arpeggios are spine chilling. True. Alex's arpeggios are beautiful and amazing and a core part of Rush. Alex is amazing. I did not mean to say anything that lowers my estimation of him in my Rush video. N nothing could be further from the truth. Alex Lifeson's one of the greatest guitar players of all time. There, I said it, period. End of sentence, let's move on. Blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. The music and lyrics from Rush inspired me in more ways than I could ever have dreamed. They have definitely shaped me into the man that I am. Ooh, thank you, Jim. John writes, I often say, Neil Peart taught me more than any other person in my life, and we never met. Feel you. Me too. With regard to the last podcast, Tina, thank you. Ah, oh, this is so lovely, so adorable. I can't wait to watch more and more. <laughs> that warmed my heart. Thank you, Miss Tina. The Rush video. This guy writes first. What an honor. Nicely done. Thank you, bud. Writes. This is with regard to a Neil Peart update and the, an update with regard to Silver Surfers. And he writes, I am also waiting for my copy. And I reported in that video that Silver Surfers keeps being, being delayed and being delayed. Not quite sure why they say it's to improve the quality. Great. Hope so. But clearly there's something going on. And Neil Peart's last book, Silver Surfers, is taking quite a while. Why we miss Neil Peart. And this guy wrote, man, I just want to say, I feel you, man. I just finished Getty's memoir and it felt like I felt the pain of losing Neil all over again. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure I can read that. I, I want to read it. I know about it. Haven't gotten it yet. But I have a feeling it would be a tough read. I'm glad you did. And I'm glad you wrote. Thank you, bro. So that's just a sample. That is a sample of the comments and viewer mail that we've gotten here at the Loud Boy Experience. I love natural science. You know how much I love Rush. And more than that, getting to know you guys, hearing from you, having you subscribe so I can then share more with you. And then conversely, you guys sharing with me. Guys, thank you so much. Um, there's going to be a lot more Rush videos coming in the future. I have some ideas. And I look forward to doing that. In college, I had several talk shows. I was a TV film major. But also part of that was radio production, audio production. 
And I always wanted to have a show called Rush Hour. It seemed perfect, right? The perfect idea. Rush Hour. I don't, I'm not sure I'll ever do that. But to say that having a talk show or a podcast talking about Rush has been on my mind since college for the past 30-something years. Ever since I discovered that and learned how to produce content and edit and shoot. And, and, uh, you know, it's always been on my mind. And yeah, Rush Hour. Wouldn't that be cool? In fact, there's an old joke. I won't get into it now. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Look forward to more Rush videos in the future. Until next time, you guys have a good night. (laughs) 